Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Yanitsa Boyajeva, and I'm now joined by Saran Falloprakan, Head of Mobile and Consumer Products Department at AIS Thailand. Hi, Saran. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hi. Firstly, what is the market position of AIS Thailand? Currently, AIS uh, has the biggest market share in mobile, and we are number three in fixed broadband. Uh, our 5G coverage is the biggest compared to, to our competitors. The challenging uh, is on monetization of the 5G network because 5G is a huge investment and uh, we uh, cannot uh, get uh, more ARPU because customer uh, demand a, a lower price for more data consumption. So we need to introduce more value added to, to the subscription. Uh, for example, uh, content or maybe the VR and AR applications uh, uh, using the 5G features. And we also hope to reduce the cost of the network by bringing in more intelligence uh, and automation to the network. Okay, so what would you say are the main challenges at the moment for the Thai market? The main challenges, uh, the first one is the ecosystem of the millimeter wave. Uh, currently, we use the low band and mid band uh, spectrum for 5G. However, the spectrum are limited and it cannot deliver the super high speed that, that the 5G can have. Uh, we already get a location of the high band, millimeter wave, but we still lack of the device and ecosystem of the network equipment. So what, what we are waiting is waiting for the device to support millimeter wave and waiting for the network equipment to support, and then we can release the full potential of the 5G. When do you expect these things to happen? Um, currently, the, the iPhone and Samsung flagship model already supports the millimeter wave, but only for the US market, uh, not for anywhere else in the world. So we hope that maybe end of this uh, end of 2023 or maybe 2024, then uh, the new version of devices could come with millimeter wave support. And then it will bring the economy of scale for the network equipment and bring the cost down. Why is cross-generation 5G so important when it comes to business growth? Yeah, um, currently uh, most operators are in the period of migrating customers from 4G to 5G. And what the customers experience today is that 5G is just a faster 4G. And that means uh, we did not uh, um, uh, deliver um, the full potential of 5G yet. Um, when we launch 5G, 5G comes with three promises. First is that it promised to deliver a very fast speed. Second, it promised to deliver very low latency. And the third one, it promised to deliver a very uh, low power. However, all these three features uh, require 5G to run in the standalone mode. Currently, uh, most 5G networks are run in non-standalone mode. That means we are using 5G mixing with 4G uh, because the 5G coverage is not good enough, so we need to piggyback on the 4G coverage. And by using the non-standalone mode, we still cannot deliver the full potential of 5G yet. So the first step operators need to do is to make sure that we can have the nationwide 5G standalone mode uh, so that we can deliver all the three features of the 5G. And lastly, what else have you got planned in the future? Uh, planned in the future is to bring the 5G to industry, uh, mainly for the medical and manufacturing industry. Uh, today, the challenging part is that uh, we need to customize the solution for one customer to another. Um, we try to create a single platform that can be reduced uh, to many customers and that would reduce the time to market and will help us to uh, scale up the deployment of 5G to industry. Thank you. It was a pleasure speaking with you today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much.